Ryan Long, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for making time for this. I appreciate it. I have a lot of questions about comedy and music and your career and lots of stuff, but first things first, I have realized that stand-up comedians are even bigger scumbags and weirdos than musicians. Why is that? <laughs> do you think that's true? I mean, I don't know very many of them. You would know better than I do, but it sure seems that way from the way they talk on podcasts. I'm like, man, my musician friends are degenerates. These guys are on another level. <laughs> I would, do you know, a big part of why I would say that musicians are wilder and this is, I just think it's because musicians are younger. Mm. You know what I mean? So okay. it's like, if you think about it, like most musicians are popular when they're like 23 and right. most comedians are popular when they're like 40. Right. Right. So the craziest 20 year olds are always just crazier. But there's like this element of like career dirt bag with the stand ups. You know, it's not like I'm partying because I'm young and wild and out of control. It's like I've been, you know, doing this like degenerate stuff for 25 years and I'm not going to stop until I'm in the grave. Do you mean uh, like lifestyle or do you mean like the shit you talk about? I mean like lifestyle. I think. There's kind like, of two you know, versions, right? So it's like, like, I've been going to massage parlors since 1994, you know, highlight of my week. You know, the, I think that musicians kind of probably thing. just don't talk about it as much, but like there's, there's, if right now being like a popular anything is like you're running a business, you know what I mean? Right. I'm sure that you're doing that right now. Yeah. People working for you, you're, yep. you know what I mean? So the idea that you're like partying every night is almost like impossible. That's, it's almost like the probably that more than anything now is more like comedians when they first start or that aren't that popular or don't have that, you know, you kind of work a bar job for a couple right, nights right. a week, then you do comedy and then you drink every night after. And there are people who still do that. But I think like in general, most people that are operating at a high level and less like being like a party animals, like part of their brand, you know what I mean? Right. Most of the people that I know these days, especially closer to 40, when they're kind of running a big operation or just like, you know, you wake up fairly early and you work all day. It's also, you know, very likely that they're kind of, you know, comedians would never exaggerate or bend the truth, but they might be. There's a huge a part bit. of that. They have yeah. there's five or six stories that are just like, you're like, this guy's insane. And right. you're like, yeah, but right. that's like once a month that he parties. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it could be that too. Um, might well, also, there is a bit of like, in general, kind of the same way that like bartenders are like party dudes, you know what I mean? It's just because you're in a bar every night, whereas right. a band a little bit more. There's that. I, so I'd say this part's on your side where you go, those guys, a lot of comedians are in a comedy club every single night where a musician might be like, it, you know, kind of back for months. And then you go on tour for a month and a half and you go hard. Then you're back home right. for like six months. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then well, you go back to your like normal life. <laughs> I was just kind of surprised because I didn't really have any exposure to, you know, I mean, back in the day, stand up comedy, you saw the special and that's all you knew about them. And then as yeah. podcasts started to become more popular, you know, 10 years ago or something, I was like, oh my God, these people are animals. <laughs> What's wrong with them? Who's your favorite? Who's, what comedians do you like? Or do you I don't actually animal? like stand up comedy. I like, um, I like listening to interviews with funny people, if that makes sense. Like, I don't like bits. Yeah. You know what I well, mean? I, it is kind of wild. Like if you think about it, like probably, I don't know if we were around the same age, probably, but like if when you're growing up, like no one had a favorite comedian. No. You know what I mean? You knew a comedian once he became a movie star or right. like had a, you know, you knew Jerry Seinfeld, right. you know, Ellen, like you knew the people Adam that Sandler had Sandler or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Movie stars and stars of sitcoms. You didn't know, like there were people, but it was like a niche subculture. Whereas yeah. now I find like normal people are like, oh, that's my favorite comedian. Like, oh, like listen to comedy podcasts and comedians like right. that. I don't know. Like when I was, you know, cause I was like a musician before stand up, I knew, you know, two comedians, you know what I mean? Right, they weren't right. big movie stars. So it's uh, that, I guess that's podcasting and the internet. It's like a whole different game now, which is obviously uh, kind of aligned with me being, you know, in it. So I think that's good. Yeah. I just don't like, um, I mean, I respect it because I completely understand how just insanely difficult and terrifying like stand up is like getting in front of thousands of people and like, okay, fucker, make me laugh. You know, like <laughs> I, I just, that is so intimidating to me. Um, but See, I, I, just, I, I, sorry, I just don't generally, I just don't, it's, it's too contrived for me for the most part. I do really like, um, what is her name? Um, I was ta Taylor Tomlinson, right? I think yeah, that's totally. the name. She's, she, she's fucking hilarious. I loved her. 
Yeah, yeah. Definitely, it's probably always better live. You know right. what I mean? Uh, the only exposure I have had is I saw Tommy Davidson in line at Barnes & Noble once when he was a playing a show that Pete night. Davidson? Uh, no, Tommy Davidson, the guy from uh, In Living Color. Oh, cool. I don't know who that is, but... <laughs> <laughs> He's just some sort of not very funny member of the In Living Color cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's... was that was my my brush with fame. I know Jim um, Carrey, fellow Canadian yeah. boy. Yeah, that's right. There are lots of, The uh, OG... Uh, a weird number of Canadians in comedy. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos early. There are members only channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of Emo's Not Dead merch. And you can also have me review your music, artwork, or anything else. All you need to do is join my Patreon at the $10 level. And then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, just drop it in the comments of that post. And then I will review it live on Twitch. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video. And I appreciate your support. The Canada thing's a little close to your other point, but stand up is the hardest thing to start, but it's not, you know, once you do it, it's just like anything else. So I've, I've sometimes look at that where you're just like, because there's so many people that are like podcasters and YouTubers or whatever. And, and a lot right. of times I do think I'll just be like, man, even like in the pandemic, there was a bit where you're just like, man, your life is so much easier if you just remove stand up. Like if I remove yes. this thing that every night you have to do and, you know, but it's, I think it's the best part and it's the centerpiece of the whole operation, at least for me. But obviously you kind of look at other people and sometimes you're jealous. You're like, man, I have like 40 hours a week of stuff that they don't have to do to do the same right. job that we're both doing. But on the other side, then I look at, I go, look at this other guy who's a podcaster that's also like a UFC guy. And I was like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I also, or like a fitness influencer or whatever. Right. I was like, I'm glad that like, you know, my, uh, you know, podcasting and YouTube making like whatever you want to call it, like career or whatever. At least I don't have to wake up every morning and, you know, work out for four hours to keep the whole thing going. Get so, punched in the face. It, yeah. So I'd like doing stand up. Whereas, yeah, if, if you're like an athlete. So, yes, there's some people that just podcasters, but stand ups definitely out of the things you have to do. It's easier than doing all, you know, being a professional soccer player. <laughs> well, you mentioned the music thing earlier. Um, I remember, I remember you from the hard times back in the day. I stumbled. Do you know those across, videos? Yeah. Yeah. I stumbled across one of your YouTube skits in like 2020, I think. And I was like, oh, I remember this guy from the hard times. Bass player support. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was our big yeah. one. Bass player support group, uh, Sound Man, The Art of Grumpy. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we did, yeah, we did some ones hardcore ones. Yeah. We did a so, concert promoter one that was pretty big. Tell tell everybody about your background in music and kind of how you, I guess, pivoted from doing that to what you're doing now. That was a, that, that was a hard time. That era where we were doing, that was like when Facebook videos were really popping. Yes. So, yeah, because I was in a, a band in Canada and then... Basically, it was weird. We were kind of like doing all these like jackass style like DVDs and I was big into Tom Green and I was doing all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then basically that kind of ended up being like a local access cable show. So I did that for a couple of years and then that kind of turned into a real TV show. And then that was like while I was doing all the music stuff. And then while I was doing that, I kind of started doing stand up and then I was spending way more of my time making videos and, you know, doing funny stuff and crazy stuff. And also that aligned with me, like kind of aging out of being in a band a little bit at the same time, right. you know what I mean? But, um, so those hard times videos, I remember when it first came out, it was just like the funniest thing I ever saw. There's some of those from the first one I saw, it was like band manager, not exactly sure what he should be doing. And it's like, <laughs> right. the, you know what I mean? They saw that sort of stuff. And there's just like, some of those, some of those like articles were just so funny. So me and the owner, who's like uh, Matt Sancombe, who's yeah, like, the him. coolest guy. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, me and him ended up talking. And then someone, I think someone is the one who introduced us, being like, "Yo, I think because I was kind of making these, you know, band comedy based videos in Canada, and they were doing this site, and they wanted to get in a video, and someone was like, "Yo, you two should like talk or whatever." And then we talked, and we're like, "Hey, why don't we like try um, a couple of videos?" You know what I mean? And then we did like a series called tour tips. And then a couple of them did like real well. And so, and they were like stupid things like how to avoid loading the trailer by taking a well-timed shit and stuff <laughs> right. like that. And we were doing all these kind of videos like that. And then 
because they were doing good, the they Matt was like, okay, let's just put some money into it, and I'll just how about this much money a video, and then we'll just do you know do three at a time, and then I ended up just making like a ton of them, and then they would get sponsorships, and I would do that, and then I just kind of became like the video guy who does all the videos. So anytime anything came through, they would just send it to me, and I would make it. But I was still living in Toronto at the time, but. Yeah, those are, and then we did some funny stuff too. Like we were going to festivals, and PBR gave us a bunch of money to like go to all these festivals and like oh, interview I never saw people. That. Yeah, yeah, we did like these. They were actually not particularly well received. The PBR, <laughs> well, there were people like them, but PBR didn't like them. What did they not like about it? Uh, uh, they were like insane. I think. They, oh, okay. <laughs> they were like kind of like. That, we had a few of those where we were doing brand deals, and then the, we would like send the videos to them, and they'd be like, "We hate this." And then we like, just was it too over. edgy for them, or? Yeah, basically. Yeah. I wonder if they would still feel that way because I feel like now it's sort of like, well, do you want attention or do you want to be brand safe? Because you can't have both. Yeah, it is like such a, I mean, you probably have that conversation all the time. You know what I mean? You know, we don't really run the content by my sponsors and I mean, maybe. You're doing it more upset, like a podcast sponsor where it's not like that. I have an agent. He just tells me, here's who the sponsor is. Here, here's how much they want to pay. I send him a draft. It's approved. And if they're ever unhappy that's about the, it, I don't you're about you, it. That's like the podcast sponsor world, the like sort of yeah. branded content world, which right, is obviously right. like bigger money and stuff like that. Yeah. You basically, you know, they're involved every step of the way, just making sure I've done stuff no like one that will see this at my old, like real jobs before, you know, like with Starbucks and Red Bull and stuff like that. So I, yeah, I, yeah I that game that stinks. I actually yeah. kind of cut that game out of my life. Cause I was just like, it's like so much money, but I just like hate it. And I was trying to, you know, like 80, 20 stuff where you're like, it's 20. awful, dude, it's awful. It's so, it's just like, oh my God, why are you hiring me to do this? If you're going to take all the good parts out, this is not good business for you. I hate doing this. Like why? This, And it's like very frustrating to spend a lot of time on something that you know is a bomb. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's like, yeah, you're literally feel like you're just like walking and you go, even the stuff you do for money, you want it to all sort of like you want it to all like work within the same, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I like this. It's all moving towards the same thing. This one happens to be making more money, right. but like, you're kind of not thinking about that. Whereas you just, there's no way to look at it. It's like, I'm doing this thing. That's like going to be a bomb. It's going to suck just because I want to make money. And I was just like, I can't like be in that game anymore. If you don't have to be, then fuck it. You know? And I mean, now it's, I mean, I feel like, I feel like COVID like changed the game for, I mean, there's always Patreon and podcasts and stuff, but I feel like for comedians, that was like the, the thing with the, just sort of open the floodgates of like making people understand that this business, making people who were not previously aware of this business model before, you know, aware of like, Oh, you, if you like comedy, you subscribe to their Patreon and then they give you more of it. Yeah, totally. I look at it as I think of I'm selling tickets. Like to me, that's what I think of right. like what I do. I'm selling tickets to my comedy show. That's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And then everything else, I just kind of put back in. So it's like everything from the Patreon, the ads, I like put all that money back into like making sketches and we have a studio okay. and hiring people and all that sort of stuff. And I just consider that just like, that's the income for the business to work with. And then my job, my actual job is doing comedy shows. I see. Okay. Cause that was gonna that's how I was look at it. it. It says your Patreon, which I, I know you have to share with some other people and stuff. It's doing like 11 grand a month plus whatever, you know, brand deals and stuff. That's a decent amount of money. And you know, uh, I hate traveling. So if it was me, I'd be like, fuck this. Like, I'm just going to make all the online stuff work. But if you like playing bad, shows. That would be a, yeah, hard to be a comedian if you didn't want to travel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be tough. Yeah. Um, obviously it sucks. Like, but, but, but do you, I mean, I, you were just in Nova Scotia like two days ago or something like that. Yeah, I went to Newfoundland. Like, Where are you? Uh, Seattle. Oh, nice dude. Yeah. I'm coming to Tacoma. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. We'll try to go if we can. We got a, a baby now, so it makes it tough, but I want to go. Oh, congrats. No, thank you. Uh, but but you like doing the the road stuff. You know, there's like a Arnold's uh, no no Dirk Nowitzki. I heard a yeah. thing when um uh, uh he, on his like documentary he has his own personal trainer and he, at one point he said kind of something that I always look at it where he's like as soon as you're asking um whether you should or shouldn't like you've already you've already lost a little yeah. bit. Whereas I was just accepting, you know, the, obviously sometimes, like I was saying with the brand and content where I was just like, this isn't working for me, but like with the standup, I just think of it as like, that's my job. Like, I don't really, you know what I mean? I don't, I try not to ever be like, oh, is this pain? Is it? It's just like, that's what yeah. I do. So right. it's like, it's kind of like my identity. That's the whole crux of everything that I am is right. going to do stand up. 
So it's like, I, if I'm in the city, I try to stand up at least, you know, four nights a week, three at least. And then, you know, I tour seven, eight days a month and that's just what my life is. And I, mean, that's I don't so really bad. like, yeah, seven or eight days, you know, and well, especially it's not like a band where you're, you know, okay, well, we got to drive 10 hours tonight to get to Utah. <laughs> yeah, the, the but that's all that's almost like the higher up as you get the the van kicking that is funner when you're just traveling with a bunch of boys like you get those like yeah. burt kreisner level where he just right. rolls with like 25 of his dudes yeah well that sounds great or i mean like ozzy you know traveling he like flies private jets between shows you know but for everyone yeah rolling, with, in a rolling van. with the squad is pretty fun though i do you sometimes miss that but then yeah. at the same time it's like a lot of times i think of it as like you know, I just get to a city and I'm just like, I'll like work during the day and do my shows during the night. And I mean, I don't know. It's like, also it keeps you like grounded, man. Like it, if you're being like a commentator or, you know, all the other things, but right. if you're doing like stand up comedy and you're not like tapped into what an audience thinks, that's why I feel like stand-ups. Right. They're like, what's with the gas mileage on Ferraris these days? Am I right? Yeah, dude. Stand up. How many commentators just like, especially in the like cultural political space, they kind of yeah. find their thing that works and just like say it forever. And right. you, but in this, even when people agree with you and that's what was stand up, it's like, you want to kind of be saying things that they like don't quite yet agree with. Yes. Yet, you know what I mean? As right. soon as you say something, so you kind of know that immediately, like you go say it in a crowd and everyone's like either pulls back or, you know, I, I remember like things that I've been saying culturally or whatever and i can yeah. feel when you're like that this used to be something where they were like oh pretty good point and now they're like yeah obviously we think right, you know right, what i mean right, right, and then you're right. just like okay after you know right that's over you know so it's yeah yeah you're you not want like, him to tapped. be a little bit like whoa but actually he's got a point that's what you want yeah, yeah. you want to kind of like they've been sort of thinking about this and you sort of like articulated it better not like they've heard it a million yeah. times so, so yeah, right, as soon right, as you're right. like as soon as you and if you remove yourself from like actual people and you just listen to like, you know, online echo chambers and nonsense right. like that. You just end up saying stuff that um, like has been said a million times. You're not you're not doing you're definitely not doing art. You know what I mean? And you you're can just tell kinda... that with some of these commentators. And, I, you know, I don't want to name names, but some of them are I'm like, name Man, names. You're, you're lost in the sauce now. You're just like repeating the same talking points. that, And, and I get it because it's probably good business. Um, so maybe I'm stupid, but I'm uh, just like you're lost in the sauce and I can no longer take you seriously anymore. I always thought of it though. It's go, if I was, if my whole goal was just to like build a business and make as much money as possible, why am I doing this at all? There's so many right, like, bad, right. Like, right. Like, Literally. Why, am I, why, else? I, <laughs> why was I being a band and playing? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, obviously you want to make money and all that sort of stuff. But if like your goal is like from, from first principles being like, yo, let me make the most amount of money possible. Like this ain't it. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right. It's like you, you know, you hang out with like tech dudes or whatever, like yeah. the ones who don't do that good are making way more money. You know what I mean? Right. right. Like you need one, <laughs> like, whereas this game, you just need like constant hits and all this sort yeah. of stuff. It's like those guys, some of these, those people, it's like, you know, started one thing that did like pretty well and got like pretty decent seed funding. And now these yeah. guys are like, they made a hundred million dollars. You know what I mean? Right. So there's right. a way better games to play or just straight up start a product and you know don't be the face of the opera like there's just a way better game the way you can just play this. like i don't know if you ever had like a friend when you were a kid you would do like a group project for school and you'd go over to their house and it's like way nicer than you were expecting you're like what the fuck what does your dad do for a living like oh he sells gravel to the school district oh yeah the not, you know? the not like, sexier the that is the yeah. more money you make <laughs> that's what that's what i like i just i'm so mad at myself for not kind of finding one of those things, just super unremarkable things. You just grind it out and fucking print money. Well, th that's kind of like the less sexier it is, even in entertainment, the less sexier totally. it is, the, you know, the more money you're going to make. Right. That's just, I the, bet there's the like some the like Christian clean comics that are just fucking killing it. Like how there'd be like Christian bands back in the day that would play, you know, churches for like three grand a night when their you know, secular counterparts would be getting 200 bucks. Oh, church guys are crushing it, dude. That's the life hacking music end comedy. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I know a few guys. I know I, actually one of my favorite, like favorite people. This guy John Christ, if you know, he's like a big, mm -hmm. like he was like a. His dad was like a pastor, and he's like a comedian. He had some like Netflix specials, and he's like, okay. his stuff is like inside baseball Christian stuff. I'm just like huge okay. theaters. He's a big star, and he's like, boy, he's like like legitimately one of the funniest people. Like I hang out with him, and he's like cracks me up he's so quick and funny but yeah, he's just like in that space and he's like annihilating see i i want to just be like one of these fake christian bands i'm going to become a fake christian comedian the cartman. That's, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's my thing. So how did you get- Who were the weird doing- ones that were, was it MXPX? But there's some weird ones that you don't realize they were the biggest Christian bands of all time. Like POD, I know, POD, was a Christian yeah. band. Yeah. You, I feel like this, you must know this. Who's Who are two or three, like the big under oath, like those ones? Yeah. But then there's- there's a couple well, Paramore of weird... was Paramore was kind of Christian in the beginning. Like they would go to Bible study and stuff on work oh. tour. Do you know what Ari um, Shafir always says? He goes, "Killers are actually the biggest Christian band." Yeah, well, they're Mormon, I think. Um, and oh. depending on who you ask, um, that may or may, may or may not be Christian. Uh, Slayer has always been undercover Catholic. Um, if you know the song "Silent Scream," read the lyrics. It's like an anti-abortion song. Um, Come on. And, Tom Mariah like goes to you know mass with his kids and stuff. I mean he's a I did not know that sixty five year old Chilean Catholic dad. You know searching for ways to unearth the Holocaust. Yeah. They have some wild yep. lyrics. Yeah, we'll check out Silent Scream from South of Heaven. You know, like it's I've not never even heard that one. It's not even like undercover. It's like the it the the name of that song is based on like this anti abortion book from the eighties. That is pretty funny to see that like all the like dudes with the uh, Dave Mustaine the also but- super Christian. Oh, really? Used to be. Yeah, I don't know where he's at now. What was that again? Mudvayne? What was Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Megadeth, um, sorry. He, he also thinks uh, he, he's a birther as well. Um, so he's, he's, he's an interesting guy. So he's like, I don't know where Obama was born, but it wasn't America. That's all I know. Oh, really? Yeah. So he, he's probably he's, into the Big Mike conspiracy then too. What's that? Michelle Obama. What? I don't, I don't know about it. Are you serious? You don't know this one? No. Well, people say that Michelle Obama is a man. Oh no, I didn't that's know the that. Real, it's a real birther conspiracy. Oh, do you know? Did you know that Michelle? Do you know where Michelle Obama is from? No. Uh, she's from Oblock, which is like the same place as all these like terrifying Chicago rappers like King Von and Lil Durk and Chief nice. Keef. It's like the most hood of all. She she is literally grew up in the same projects as all those guys. Hell yeah, I like that. So, I like the New York like trap scene. Yeah, I, it's it's just wild now. Like everyone, it's like fucking GTA, but real. Dude, I on it. I mean, not, like it is insane that these guys are like eighteen, and then now they're going to jail for like forty years because they yeah. you know, had to prove that they're the real deal or whatever. So it's, it's pretty right. wild, and they're like all getting cracked. They, these are legitimately seventeen year olds. They pop up if you watch what they sure. do. They'll like they'll have like beefs. The way that, you know, people on the yeah. internet have beefs and they get on live and they have their beefs and it's like, and talk ha- about it, ha- talk about it, talk have about how they killed each other's it. friends, yeah. like have their guns and <laughs> right. the guys like, I'm here right now. I'm here right now. And they like organize right. a fight. You know right. what I mean? Like how yeah, many times wild. you see on Twitter Yeah, you see that shit on Twitter where it's like, you wouldn't say that to my face, but it's like, no one's ever going to see everyone right. to their, anyone to their face. These guys are like, yeah, I'm like a fucking mile away from you come right now and i mean there's do. probably been like dozens of rappers now killed over twitter beef which is wild and sad but that's that's what it's that's what it is though. tiktok beefs with these guys and like live streams <laughs> on instagram that. dude it's like nuts. oh man rest rest in peace ryan oh what what happened like oh tiktok beef another, dude, it really is another a good man I mean, that's the thing about always with, I mean, even when I look at, like I was into doing like wild stuff on the street and all that kind of stuff. And even kind of what I was saying about music, it's like, if you look, the new generation just always is crazier. You know, like even jackass, like those guys are doing wild stuff. The new YouTube pranksters now are like breaking into houses. Like, you know, that guy. (laughs) Right. Or the guy that crashed his plane. Did you see that one? No. What did he do? Is that his crashing plane prank? (laughs) Yeah, but it's real. Like he bought some junky old, like, you know, Cessna type plane for 30 grand or something. And for a YouTube prank video, he like flew it up to 10,000 feet or whatever and jumped out of it and just crashed into the fucking mountains. Not dude. You can't. And he's, and, he, and he's, he's going to prison for it. What, how, uh, what, how much time do you do for the plane crash? I no, I mean, it's like two or three years or something, but still, I mean, <laughs> you're going to federal prison over a YouTube prank video. I, I well, that's know, the, is, the, the Mizzy guy is going to be on his way out. The, you, the ones that are the craziest, even like, I don't know if it's illegal or if any of these guys get locked up, but they're just like, the, hey, go like pants a guy in the bloods. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So that shit, you look at it and you're just like, we were yeah, pretty good at like getting kicked out of malls and causing trouble, you know, right. like, <laughs> but the I idea. I wonder if like, there's like a hierarchy of like, um, uh, of of dying over social media beef like is it cooler to die over twitter beef versus tiktok versus like snapchat beef like you know i feel like dying over twitter beef is sort of is the yes yeah, is, the, is the highest tier but like <laughs> yeah, dying yeah, over yeah. snapchat beef that sounds kind of sad to me snapchat beef's tough yeah <laughs> 
No, there is like, I mean, there was one recently, those four people like jumped out of a boat for like a challenge and they died. Like, oh, right. It, it is. So if you're, you know, in your thirties and you're like, I'll be a, you know, crazy prank guy. And you're like, it's like, it's like an old guy coming back right. and you're just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I mean, I imagine go- dying over a Facebook prank. That's gotta be, that's really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where that's, you're a, really that's a boomer bad. prank. Facebook's the yeah. boomer prank. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's all the like I you know I told my told my kid Christmas is canceled prank you know taking <laughs> right. away my son's PS3 that's all that's all Facebook's pure boomer humor. So how did you pivot from doing or I don't know if it was a pivot or a transition or what but how did you go from doing the music stuff that I first saw you from to doing I guess you know social commentary or whatever you would describe your stuff now? Well, you could say like. I think there's other people that, uh, especially in our generation, there's like, everything's about video. So you're kind of yeah. already doing it. You know what I mean? Like even think about like odd future or bands like that. Mm-hmm. They turn that into their TV show. Like Tom Green, right. if you know this, but he was like a, he had like a Canadian Grammy, like before he did his TV show. Oh, I didn't know that. No. He was a rapper. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. White rapper. You should check it out. Check the OR was the song. Okay. But like, I only you know, know he had that, can, that public access show or something. Yeah. 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 The but first before that, he was seen. like a rapper that had a couple of hits and same with, um, oh. you know, jackass guys were always super tapped into music. It's all yeah. to me, like, you know, making funny videos, like skateboarding videos was always uh-huh. sort of into that snowboarding videos. So I was just like doing all these videos as much as I was doing music. You know what I mean? Okay. And then I started making, I had like a little office in Toronto and I was doing all these music videos And then I was doing the TV shows and then I was doing all the hard time stuff. And then the hard time stuff, CBC is like the BBC, but for Canada, it's like the main network. Then the hard, kind of the hard times videos sort of pitched like versions of what I was doing with that stuff as like a show. And then I did this show called Trontopia in Canada that we did like three seasons of that show. And it was all just like, you know, sketches about like Toronto stuff. So I was kind of Mm -hmm. like, same thing I did with music. I kind of did that same thing about like Toronto stuff. And we had like a bunch of, So I just like kind of was good at like going viral with like sketches within a little community or whatever. Uh And then I kind of had the stuff I was talking about on stand up, but you're in Canada, you're sort of, I was like almost talking about this stuff forever, but you know, no one cares and no one's like listening. And then when I moved to America, you're kind of like in the scene and it was kind of like, you know, for a second, I guess you're like the new fresh thing where everyone's like, Oh, who the the hell is this guy? And then you kind of just, now you're just, you know, you kind of, uh, settle into just trying to, you know, slowly get better every day or right. whatever. But I think that I just did, I literally did the same thing that I've done five other times. I just did it on my own channels in America. Got people it. always kind of say that it's kind of like a, in business, people go solve the rich people's problems because they pay more. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like it takes the same amount of brain space to solve yeah. a problem. You might as well solve, you know, a more important problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're in that world trying to make money or whatever, right? But um, so basically, yeah. don't waste your time talking about bullshit in Canada. Talk about bullshit in America. Yeah, the thing is always it's the exact same hustle, but yeah. the payoffs just way smaller. Like right. being a gr- great comedian is just as hard wherever you are geographically. It just doesn't matter over there. Sometimes I wonder that about myself. I'm like, why am I mate like spending all this time talking about this kind of music that fucking nobody even cares about anymore? Like why people why care? Do I your do numbers are myself? cooking, man. People obviously care. I mean, they're okay, you know. Um, I well, mean, I'm, compared I'm, to what, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, well, what if, what if I spent the same amount of energy talking about something other than fucking Slipknot? Maybe well, you can do 10 both times though, because you just go do it on a different channel. Like you could easily just do both, right? If I had to... more hours in the day, yes. Well, that's everyone's problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the problem. Um, what well, was there one kind of big? breakout moment for you i feel like it was the woke and racist thing was maybe a, a big breakout or am i wrong that was probably like the that wasn't actually randomly like my biggest video but no i had like five or six ones before okay. that. i was doing a lot of it was kind of like peak the trump era and i was doing a lot of yeah. like both sides videos if you, I don't uh-huh. know if you remember but i was did like the editor that sends footage to like fox and cnn that I was like i saw that one yeah, and I was doing like, basically I was doing a lot of that. And I was like a guy that hates right. Trump and loves Trump lives in a house. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. And I then I was, was doing, yeah, I think I remember some of those. Kind of the, like the, bo- I have the boys cast and like a lot of that yeah. stuff is kind of what I was doing comedically. Like I kind of, to be honest, I felt like in 2000, like 18, 19, I sort of moved to a little bit away from the culture stuff. Cause I felt like it sort of was like, 
it, it sort of felt like the pandemic, like just made everything crazy again, but I was yes. way more talking about like men and women and all that sort of stuff that I talk about on the boys cast. Right. And I was kind of like, which a lot of my stand up is kind of more about that sort of stuff. Like, but I was talking about all like race and men and women, but then because when things get very heated, it kind of became like, you're not supposed to say that anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was Which means it kind it's of, time to say it. <laughs> so there, yeah, but there were so, so many things where you're like, you're kind of just saying something that like, like imagine you had like a, a point that was like, oh, black guys are like this and white guys are like yeah. that. Like, I'm not even saying I have necessarily always that point, but it's like, yeah. that's like almost like basic, you know what I mean? Or men are like this, women are like that. Yeah. There almost became an era where they're like, yo, you're not supposed to say that. And it's like g- general comedy. Almost? What do you mean almost? Right. So you kind of, <laughs> like I remember. It's literally exactly that. Right. So to me. It was like a, a, the the things that were just like normal points was like, buddy, you can't like say that. So yeah, it yeah. kind of became like, I know you're not supposed to say this. And it almost added extra juice to just like, n- like just being a normal person, which yeah, I was kind right. of like, my whole thing was, I was just like, right. I'm just going to talk the way that I, like a n- normal group of friends talk. Right. Cause you get together with like any of your boys, whether that be like my old, like guys from the band, like college friends and everyone thinks something. And then online, everyone pretends there's something different. Right. And I, my right. thing was, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to, what would I talk like if I just ignored like the repercussions and just like, but, but Ryan, we don't, we won't really like to point out that water is wet. You know, we just kind of. Right. So you go, what if you just like pretend that nothing changed and I just talk exactly how the way that I do at my friends, if a bar was there, because even like dudes talk with their fr- male friends different than they talk yeah. with girls around, like everyone does right. To some degree, censor themselves. Right. And you're like, of course. what if you just don't, that's kind of like how I looked at it. Well, you came out with that woke versus racist thing. Uh, I just looked. It was July of 2020, which uh, for, you know, being a, a, a white male to make that joke in July of 2020 uh, was, <laughs> to your point before, a pretty bold time to make that joke. Yeah, especially when I went to the race shit. But like, if you look at it now, like that's like, you know, like yeah. making that I'd be like embarrassed to make that now kind of right, it would right. just feel like an old guy or something. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no, that's what, to be honest, like, that's kind of one of the weird parts about, like, doing culture stuff. It's like, if you're great in, like, two years, they'll look at it as hack. Right, right. Because if you say something, even on stage. That's kind of a fun, creative challenge, though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can, or you settle in, you know what I mean? But yeah, Yeah. you try to, like, I don't even use that word anymore. Like, I would never say that word in a sketch or a video or on stage. Like, to me, that's, like, just the era that's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was thinking the same thing this morning. I remember I was listening to some podcast. I don't remember how it came up. They're talking about woke this or that. It sounds like, like oh an old God. person. Yeah, exactly. Like God complaining about being woke at this point is worse. Well, it got than settled. I mean, no, no normal person wasn't like, yeah, that stuff got out of control. So it's yeah. like, okay. So yeah, right. Right. It's sort of settled. Yeah. And there's still like funny stuff that comes up now and then, but it's just like, I, even when stand up, I always felt like, my tech, not, I don't know, technique or whatever, but like one, one thing that I was always would do, even when I was, cause my thing wasn't to, you know, I've never supported a political candidate. I yeah. don't have, you know what I mean? So I always kind of was like, I'll talk about the issues, but I'll never use the words. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, cause the, as soon as the word you say the words, people pinpoint you and I'm doing, I'm like right. doing stand up in like major cities for all sorts of different groups of people. My thing wasn't to like develop like some cold following that, yeah. you know, I'm preaching to. Right. So when you're kind of like, like if, if even like the, if you use the word like fat phobic, it's like everyone yeah. knows kind of like they can place you in their mind, which you right. don't, I feel like in stand up, you don't want to be placed. You want to be like water. So then you can, unless you want to be one of those people that just panders. Yeah, exactly. Which you probably don't No, you, I mean, it's not, it's just like, like it's, you're not, you're not like doing stand up anymore. No, you're not. It's just that's the content factory. And like, I just, uh, I, I'm so jealous. Also, it's like of you're these- around people. I think that's the other thing. It's like, I'm at the comedy cellar like every night. I'm at, in the clubs in New York City, which is the hub of the world. It's like, you can't be that guy at those places. Dude, everyone, you have to like also stand up is very like, like what your peers think matters. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. It would just be embarrassing to be that guy that gets up there doing kind of hack. Well, I mean, you probably just, there probably isn't even an opportunity. I feel like there's got to be like a whole, separate kind of lane for people that just do that really hacky partisan stuff. Yeah. I think it's one of the things it's like an exit strategy, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like there's that, all those MAGA rappers that have nothing to do with like <laughs> actual rap. That'll just play like some. Those guys are crushing it. Infl- yeah. But dude, they probably, I'm, I'm sure they make so much money, but it's Bloody. just, they're playing to a bunch of like old white people at some bar in Florida 
you know that it has nothing to do with the actual that rap. is funny though being a rapper and then sh- like especially like a black one and then showing up in your audience is like 50 year old like white right. guys right. <laughs> <laughs> hey i i just i'm genuinely curious Dude, how the many amount of have- money that i've like turned down to not kind of like be involved like politically is uh um i don't know what the best word would be like um uh painful i don't know i don't know whatever (laughs) but like yeah yeah like you know like more money than i would make in a year in a month if i would you know do this things go do this gig at this partisan political event that you don't want to be associated with that kind of thing yeah or do a tv show at this you know political place or got it i mean you know there's there's uh comedians kind of control culture in a lot of the ways right so it's like uh, always like political organizations are trying to you know kind of get comedians to kind of endorse them then they it kind of like it makes them kind of because their business model is like just be as inflammatory as possible right and then half the people hate you half the people like you and then that sort of leads to you being bigger but it also leads to like you don't really have cultural power you only have you know what i mean you kind of just become like a you you become a reiteration of like consensus of what people you think right yeah so if um so they always want to kind of they're always trying to like woo people that so it's almost like they can, uh, you know, they're buying your brand to sort of like soften theirs in some way, if that makes yeah. sense. But yeah. Yeah. That's exactly there's a lot of money is. in selling that, but it just, I don't know. It's like, I'm like in the middle of doing stuff I want to do. Like I'm not trying to throw away it all for a paycheck. I don't know. It'd be crazy. Well, I feel like there's probably a lot of people who perceive you only because you aren't just like super leftist there's probably a lot of people who perceive you as being some sort of like a a red pilled kind of comedian to me which is like obviously not what you're doing but i feel like a lot of people probably jump to that conclusion that word doesn't bother me i mean i'm not like a red pill guy but like i mean that wouldn't bother me i, I think if someone said i was a like conservative you'd be like well, I'm well like yeah whatever word, but, you know that. what i mean people that might sort of put you in that bucket just because you might they, they, you might be critical of something you know some crazy leftist shit. They might Who decide like, that you also believe the following ten things that you're like, uh, oh, whoa, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I know very few. Like, I don't know. I just like I said, I've like lots of different groups of friends. I know very few guys where, you know, what I'm saying is in any way like, whoa, you know what I mean? Well, you say that, but. I feel like saying the things that you say sort of, I mean, for me, you know, coming from like the punk world, saying things that you say is definitely not acceptable. Yeah. That's punk world sort of has its own doctrine, which that's what it is. To say the least. (laughs) Yeah. And there's sort Um, of two, there's two types. There's the people that are sort of like, you know, proper, like, you know, leftists, you know what I mean? And then there's people that are kind of like all in on the, uh, you know, new school kind of social justice stuff. And there's sort of, there's a divide in that, obviously of those two people. There's, I mean, I I think that I would say that, you know, like I have a lot of, you know, punk friends as well, obviously coming from that world where you would, that they were like, yeah, they're very like hardcore kind of like leftist dudes. You know, I know a few guys that like went on to like big punk guys that kind of went on to be like university professors. And those guys are, yeah, they're all in on, uh, you know, what would be describe it? Like kind of Bernie Sanders style, like politics yeah. kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But like more, you know, he would be soft for the way that they are. Right. But right. they're not, they're not all about like, they're not crazy. You know, hey, being fat's great or whatever. Like, I don't even know how those two <laughs> right. are connected. You know what I mean? It's like, it's right. just kind of two different things. And I think a lot of the people that I've met doing all the videos and stuff like that kind of fit in that world. Whereas I, I think I'd see myself as like, I always look at there's, if you wanted like my actual opinions, they kind of, sometimes I don't know because it, you know, changes issue to issue, but yeah, I always say like, there's also like what you would think would be better for a country. And then you, what you would think would be better for you. Like, I, right. obviously I moved to America. So it's like, I obviously moved to a place where I think, you know, there's more freedom of speech and you can, yeah. you know, uh, it's more like individualistic based, but that's because I have a specific thing that I want to do. You know what I mean? Right. That doesn't mean that I think that's better for everyone. You know, like, I think that like, if you look at Canada and you're like, you know, healthcare and all that sort of stuff, I think on average, that's better. If you're trying to do a specific goal and you're kind of laser focused on that, it's like, you know, I moved to the place where I think I could accomplish that better. That doesn't mean that. So you kind of like the same reason if you have, uh, 
you know, a lot of like kids or whatever, you know, there's something that's going to be better for each kid. And then there's like, in general, your parenting strategies. I always kind of say that with like being an artist, even it was like, I don't think that I would recommend this like career path or even like potentially encourage it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but you should you, be you, able to do it. Yeah. Or like yeah. anything, like being a, you know, OnlyFans chick or whatever. Like, right. I have nothing against it. There's people to do it. But like, I don't think you'd probably tell every girl that's a good idea. But like, right. it takes a specific type of person to be able to, you know, do like an alternative lifestyle. So I think that's like, there's kind of like what's better for you as a person or your friend or like your kids or whatever. And then there's probably like, what do you think on aggregates a good policy? And to me, like those things, they always get like clumped together. You know what I mean? But it's not always true. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like that sometimes myself with you know nimbyism. Like for example, um, you know, I'm always in favor. I mean, like it's, I I literally realize that I am a nimby person because in what general, you know, I actually not, not in my not. backyard. Meaning, okay. like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah, favor yeah. of X, but not when they're doing <laughs> it in my yeah, backyard. Yeah. And so in general, you know, I'm in favor of development. And you know, when people complain about gentrification, I'm like, oh, just deal with it. It's just the order of things. But then there's like some trees down the street from us that just got cut down for some apartments. And I was like furious about it. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> oh, for sure. Obviously. Like, I mean, I mean, you, you have to be lying to yourself. If like you're, even if you're like, oh, I think the tax rate should be higher. And then your tax yeah. rate goes higher and you just lost, you know, an extra 10 grand that year. It's like, right. obviously you'd be like, yes. Okay. That's the cost of doing, that's what I wanted. But like, there's no way you're like pumped. Right. <laughs> you know right. I mean? Like, how could you be? <laughs> It'd be like insane. Like you'd have to, <laughs> Well, I mean, there might be maybe that's some sort of weird kind of like financial domination fetish, like financial masochism kind well, of fetish the, or something. For it sure. Or there. you just have so much money that it's like really it kind of doesn't really make an effect. Right. For the same reason, you know, but if you have lots of money, a lot of times you're, you know, paying for other people and helping other people out and doing all that stuff anyway. So this is just kind of like you see it as that, you know, well, what I mean? I, and on top of that, the a lot of money people are like, yeah, they're figuring out ways to not pay it anyway. So. I feel like there is an element of masochism to a lot of those people. Like my wife, uh, she's Vietnamese and she always like rolls her eyes, like her family are like Vietnamese refugees. And she always rolls her eyes at these white people who are guilt, feel guilty about everything. She compares them to like those monks that like flog themselves or what whatever. Is that? Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't remember the names of them, but like, for example, the land use acknowledgement thing is my favorite example of it, you know, ben which, and Jerry's. which we've imported from Canada. Um, you know, they get up before they do it in the government here. So like my dad worked for the department of corrections. He retired before they started doing this, but I just can't imagine them doing this. Like at meetings in the prison that he worked at where they get up and read this thing. Some fucking 55 year old white guy gets up there and reads this thing saying, we acknowledge that we were standing on land that was once, you know, um, owned by the such and such, such and such tribe and conquered by colonialism. Like, okay, great. So you're going to give it back. Oh, well, no. We're just acknowledging that we took yeah. your shit. We basically gave, we almost gave it back. We're like one under that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's not get carried away, but it's like, there's just this element of people that wants to just like flog themselves for things they didn't even do. It's such a weird impulse. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a weird impulse, but it also like, I bet, I think it like happens over and over and over again. So like, for some reason we have it as like humans, you know what I mean? I guess. I mean, maybe I'm just like a sociopath or something, but to me, it's like, well, I didn't fucking do it. My I think it's a feminine it. impulse. I think, and I don't mean that like in a negative way. I just mean, yeah. I think it's a little more like, I think that, uh, you know, this isn't male or female, but like, I think that it's, you know, like a, if you look at someone, I mean, they've done this, this isn't my opinion. It's like, you yeah. know, they've run this study 10 trillion times. Right. But it's like the, you know, masculine versus feminine. It's, you're more likely to kind of, you know, be all about that stuff. I mean, you're, it's more collectivist, right? Yeah. I mean, men are awful, selfish creatures. I mean, that's sort of our job in the world is to be that, you know, to go. Yeah. I mean, it depends conquer. on how you look at it, right? There's the lots of schools of thought and I kind of, you know, go back and forth. Like the Ayn Rand school of thought is like, yeah, yeah. That's, that is the like purest form of how you should be living your life. And then there's the all the other version of that, where it's like, that is a, uh, that's like a load of bullshit. Destructive. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you agree with me. Um, I feel like eating soup is kind of a feminine thing. I'm not on board with it. <laughs> like, can you hear like women just, they love talking about soup. Dude. I love, I love the, like the, all, the like 
all in red pill space where it's just like, you know, man ever eats soup. Like when it just gets so extreme, like those guys. We're using bookmarks. That's my favorite one. <laughs> See, that's a perfect example of like even the stuff we were talking about that I was saying, like, yeah. you know, it eventually kind of a lot of people were saying it. Right. And then yeah. I would say the same thing about that, like red pill space where it's like, you know, there was all these kind of like guru guys. And then yeah, like Kevin Samuels, kind of saw, those kind of people. And then you kind of saw a few people kind of popping up, making fun of them. And now that's yeah. like a genre of content on the internet, like making oh, fun okay. of those guys. And then eventually what always happens is the people making fun of the thing has outgrown the people actually right, doing the right. thing. And that's when you're like, you're in way too deep on this thing. You know, the well I mean? has definitely run dry, but I really do feel that way about soup. That's my sincere opinion. Well, it I depends on how you soup eat it, is right? a feminine trait. Eating it with a spoon is a little feminine. If you take the full bowl and you'd like just <laughs> right. down it, I think that's right. pretty manly. You know that, what I mean? That could work. Eat okay. The bowl afterwards. Yeah, good good point. Smash, just throw it down and smash it. That's what Conan would do. Yeah, you go, you go kind of miso soup style. That's how you do it in uh-huh. a manly way. Well, uh, speaking of of the sort of manosphere kind of thing, I wanted to ask you, you've made fun of it a couple of times, but like the Andrew Tate thing is very, very interesting. You had this kid about the normal guy trying to be Andrew Tate or whatever. I, I've, I thought he was hilarious at first and I thought he was just completely trolling. And I still think maybe he kind of is, but there's a lot of people. Well, I think he's a terrible person also, I should be clear, but there's a lot of people that take him seriously. And I'm just kind of surprised that people jumped on the Andrew Tate program the way they did. Where do you think that appeal comes from? Are you? You're surprised? I mean, I'm probably naive because like, yeah, I'm just like, really? Like, I I feel like half the time he's talking, you can see he's like trying not to laugh because what he's saying is so ridiculous. Yeah. And his audience like just is all in on it. I mean, I think he's literally trying to suppress a smile half the time when he's talking. Well, there's, yeah, there's like a lot going on at the same time, right? So the first part is that, um, you know, a lot of the stuff he's saying he didn't invent, right? The same way that Jordan Peterson's saying a lot of like Carl Jung stuff, you know what I mean? So like a lot of that stuff is like to some degree, and then it's mixed in with, you know, kind of like jokes and it gets a little wishy-washy, which is which, right? Um, This is why some comedians are like, oh, I'm just making jokes. And you're like, sometimes you are. Sometimes right. you weren't, you know what I right. mean? Like it's, there's both kind of going on. And at you've the got same that time. escape hatch. If I say something that was actually really shitty, I can be like, Oh, it's just a joke. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, yeah, if, if you weren't joking, take like if, and sometimes we like, I'm just joking. It's like, okay, but you do think that though. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, okay, then you weren't really, jo- <laughs> right. I don't know. It kind of goes bo- like there's, you know, sometimes it is actually satire and sometimes yeah. it's, you know, so there's both going on at the same time. But I think if you look at even, you know, sometimes, you know, like when people be like, oh, racism's more high after all that stuff. It's like, if you, t- the same reason, if, if you took like some, you know, kid that lives in like a bad area and everyone tells them they're bad, black or white, right? All it takes yeah. is one person to be like, no, you're not bad, dude. You're like, you're great. They're bad. You're the best. And it's right. like, you'll now do everything that guy says. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. so many people are just looking, so many dudes are just looking for like a little bit of encouragement. And I think with, uh, uh, a guy like him, he just did, he hit all the things. He was kind of like, hey, you don't have to be embarrassed to like want to be great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't have to be embarrassed to like want to have a car and a hot chick. Actually, it's sick. You know what right. I mean? So I think some of these, it's like people have these like sort of instincts inside of them and nothing is in the world seems to be like speaking to them in a way that describes the way they actually think. Yes. You know what I mean? And you're like, dude, you don't have to be fucking embarrassed to be man. And then and then someone like comes along and says that. And that's like the first time it's like, thank you. Like, that's what yeah. I've been kind of frigging thinking now, the, which is, you know, that should be kind of where it's, you know, okay, I'm not crazy. Right. Like right, it's right, someone right. telling you yeah. you're not crazy. Right. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, well the next then it, you know, then it, then once, you know, in like doc, you should being recruit your like sister a to, like a, to be a call girl for you. Frog. Like, uh, all right, maybe we've gone too far now. But like, so I get if you remove, you know, I'm the type of dude that like, I do like, you know, listening to like, all, all, like the, any given Sunday football speech. Like, yeah, I wa- I like watching like sports yeah. documentaries to get me like hyped up on like, I should be fucking, oh, I'm like, I'm slacking. I should be doing better. Like, it's like you put on the patent speech in the morning when you're like brushing your teeth to get hyped for the day. Yeah, dude. Do you know, I like a lot of times. Um, and again, this isn't just men, females, masculine, feminine, but like so many times there, uh, people have made the observation that, that girls that like guys therapy always kind of you know talks like focuses on accepting when it should focus on like empowering you know what i mean mm-hmm. in a way just being like dude 
like, okay, stop crying. Stop being like yeah. some people do need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And there is like, if you're, let's say you're some 16 year old, you know, dude that's never, you know, ever been able to get a girl, never like so that might guy, some of those guys might need someone to be like, stop crying, get yeah. in shape, like stop being a bitch. I mean, that's what the military probably is for a lot of people. Right. Yeah. So like that principle takes place. There are some times where you might need the opposite. Like, you know, yeah. everyone might need someone to be like, and there might be some people that don't need that at all. Like there's some people that are like, yeah, I don't need like a, a speech like that. But there are some yeah. people that that's all they needed is like a dad to tell them, you know, an, an internet dad to be like, yo, yeah. get your shit together. And that was Jordan Peterson being like, yeah. yo, stop being a bitch, get your shit together, make your bed. And it's like, oh, like, oh, I, it's like almost like you, you're like, you were kind of like offshooting your, uh, accountability you know what i yes. mean oh it's everyone like and then they're just like no no this is your fault like and then I mean, it's it kind Jordan of peterson is such so a good example of someone appeal. at the beginning what he was saying like you said is like very basic stuff that anybody should be on board with and then he kind of gets lost in the sauce of maybe um believing his own hype a little bit or being surrounded by too many people like encouraging him to like say sort of increasingly crazy things and then he like goes on this fucking like benzo fucking coma He's the best and, right now, and dude. comes back and like I see, I see he came back like he had that he started a youtube channel a while ago and i saw the first video he, he put out was called hey muslims and i was like oh my god <laughs> we did a couple of videos making fun of him like, and he actually retweeted fuck. one so he was like a good sport about what it, is but... wrong with this guy dude people will say stuff on the internet and he'll retweet it and be like why don't you say that to my face <laughs> <laughs> right like uh do you think you're intimidating or like you like you're 60 years old starting fights with people on Twitter? Like what is going on? I am like somewhat of not a negative person in that like I try obviously when you're commentating, I'm making fun of stuff. Yeah. But there's lots of people that I think like lost their minds online, yeah. but like made a good album or made a good TV show or made a good special. Yeah. And it's like like, I mean, I don't know. Howard Stern would be like maybe even one of those people where everyone's like, this guy is, and some people are like, hate him now. You know what I mean? Where it's right. like, I don't think there's much he could do to ever in my mind, like outweigh how great he was. You know what I mean? So I'm kind yeah. of like, I'm, I'm, I'm usually like kind of, uh, even, even like the craziest people, a lot of times there's some like good nuggets in there. So I kind of, I, I really like to sort of like collect those and sort of add them to my own philosophy. But dude, he specifically, Jordan, like, yeah, Andrew Tate's kind of like a self parody the whole time. Whereas Jordan, he Peterson, knows what he's doing. Jordan Peterson is just, <laughs> whew. he's on you, planet you, you Jordan. Find it funny? I think he's hilarious. I mean, hilarious to laugh at, not laugh with, just to be clear. He's on planet Jordan and it's amazing. Yeah, that's why, like, I was satire in that. Like, I was just like, I have to do videos about this stuff, even though he's Canadian. The, um, <laughs> There's these guys, uh, Friday beers, and they do this character entrepreneur. It's like uh -huh. one of their like sites, and they do uh, kind of like a guru character, and um, they do like the the classroom lectures, and they do they do like they kind of do a really funny version of all these like guru guys, and they do like a good Jordan Pe like it's kind of like a mix of like Jordan Peterson and like Jordan Belford, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like a finance guy, and I'll just be like, um, what are some of the good ones? It was like. He goes, every time, uh, you know, I, I think of a good idea, I need a nut. So he's like, I nut 50 times a day. And he's just like, I help someone will ask him a question. And he's like, sits there and like nuts. Then he can answer the question. <laughs> he's just like, they just like take it to the absolute extreme. I actually had a good idea for one where I wanted to do, you know, there's those, uh, there's like a couple of podcasts where they'll just have like a lot of the girls on yeah. and then kind of be like, what's your body count and all that sort of stuff. Right, right, right. I want to do guys. We're going to get like fat suits and be like, the fat red pill and it's like guys uh -huh. that are 500 pounds and then just like bring these like hot chicks on and be like yeah, you're like a three tops it's just like these like <laughs> right. the fattest guys like telling the hottest chicks that they would you know, you'd be like if i if i i would cheat on you then you'd stay with me you'd nothing you could do like all that <laughs> right <kind of> <laughs> It's so <laughs> weird that girl, to me. Pearl, she tweets like, I mean, obviously everything just gets so out of hand. That's one thing that I like and like obviously is silly about America. Yeah. Like everything just goes so extreme where it's like, it started being like, hey, this feminism stuff, like there might be getting out of control. To the, and then it's yeah. got to like within six months, there's people like, should women vote? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> right. just like, it's like, can't, there's no chill in this country. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Women's suffrage was a mistake. Time to walk it back. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like, I mean, my buddy, there's this guy, Garrett Jamison, 
who was in like a ton of my videos when I was doing the Toronto stuff. And he was actually the main guy in the bass player video. Okay. It's like a, he's got like wild hair. He's like one of the funniest guys I know in my life. Right. And he was like, he once said something that I think is a smart thing about comedy is like the world, the world is like a South park episode. A lot of times, you know what I mean? It's like everyone with pitchforks running one way and then everyone pitchforks running the yeah. other way. And he was kind of, he described it as like uh comedy is like the, the, the force that like pulls the crazy things back in in some ways. But I think it's kind of in somewhat true because you, you know, things go too far and then people kind of start like making jokes about it. And then it kind mm -hmm. of, okay, it kind of co comes back a little bit. So maybe that's how I, like a lot of people will say the point of comedy is to, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, further a movement or whatever, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you should be using your voice to like help a movement. Whereas I kind of, I see it more as like a balancing force in the world. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, cool. Well, I will let you go. I know you got a lot of things uh, on your plate. I appreciate your time, and uh, I will try to catch you in Tacoma. Okay. Yeah, did. let me know if you want to come. That'd be cool. I'll give you whatever many tickets you want or whatever. But yeah, those cool. shows, are, we actually sold out both of them last time I was in Tacoma, so it should be pretty cool. 